listeners and welcome to episode 74 of the Nigeria Football Weekly Podcast with me, your host, Olu OK. And boy, do we have yet another good episode in store for you today because we'll be celebrating Nigeria's win in the quarterfinal against Angola and also previewing our big, big clash against the South Africans taking place on Wednesday, 6 p.m. Nigeria time in the semi-final of the Africa Cup of Nations. Without any further ado, you know, we have to get into it. So... Last week, Friday, uh, I left work early to watch the match, as you know, and everybody watching this pod knows. Nigeria beat the Antelopes of Angola 1-0 in the Africa Cup of Nations quarterfinal. It must be said, it was another strong performance from the Nigerian national team. Um, we beat them 1-0. Yes, it was just 1-0, but I'll say it was a comprehensive 1-0 win, shall we say. Um, so, Ademola Lukman put the ball in the back of the net in the 41st minute after exceptional work from Ozzy Simon. So, we're going to get into that. Now, what was the tale of the tape? Stats-wise, Nigeria, we had 13 shots to Angola's 10. Uh, we had three shots on target to Angola's 2. Possession-wise, they did shade it 55%, 45%, but that's understandable because they were chasing the game for the better part of the second half. Um, they did have more passes than us and their passing accuracy was slightly better. Um, but when you look at the tail of the tape, they committed 19 fouls to our 13 and they also had three yellow cards to our one. Um, so in general, um, anyone who watched the game, I guess you could say Nigeria were the dominant team. Starting lineup wise, we got it correct. Nigeria did not make any changes to the starting lineup. Stanley Nwabali was in goal. Semi Ajayi chose Ekong and Basi continued in the center of defense. Frank Rijeka and Iwobi continued in the middle. Um, Zedu Sanusi a left wing back, Ola Aina a right wing back, with Victor Osima up top with Lukman on the left wing and Moses Simon on the right wing. As for our opponents, Angola, they started pretty much with the team I expected. Obviously, their goalkeeper got a red card in the game against Namibia, so he did not play. They had their number one seniority in goal. Mablulu played, Gelson Dalla played, Gilberto played. Freddie, their inspirational captain, also started the game. And no disrespect to Angola, but I don't need to mention the rest of the team. Um, game recap. Um, first half, third minute, Nwabali had a save from a corner after Zaidu gave away the corner. That was probably one of the few times that Angola did scare us. Um, but Nwabali showed his safe hands. Really, really pleased he recovered to start the game. Um, I initially thought in the seventh minute we had a handball from a Luke Mann shot, but it did not actually hit the defender's hand. Uh, Osime then had a header in the 14th minute from a Frank Rijeka cross, um, so testing them early. Um, we then saw another chance in the 23rd minute from a Moses Simon cross again, but Osime headed straight at the goalkeeper. 28th minute, we then show Iwobi shoot from distance. The defender blocked it with his head, and he actually had to go down for some treatment, but that was one of the ones that he really lathered. 34th minute, Osime had a header from Ola Aina's long throw, which also went close. Um, well, not too close, to be fair. That one was wide, but we were we were looking threatening. And then 37th minute, Gilberto headed well wide from an Angola corner. And then in the 41st minute, the ball was in play, and Moses Simon, oh my God, he's like the road runner. He got to the ball in front of just before the Angola defender tried to slide tackle him. And next thing you know, he was in a ball of space. Shout out to Moses Simon for his decision making because he could have easily made the wrong decision. But instead, he caught the ball back to look Ademola Lukman, who was literally rushing towards the goal. Osimed did a great job of dragging two defenders with him because he's always going to be the, 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 the focal point of the defense's worries. And Lukman, with an emphatic finish with his left foot, put the ball into the top of the net in the middle. Uh, great goal. So Lukman now has three goals in two um, knockout games. He is officially the fourth Nigerian player to score three or more goals in the knockout stages of AFCON after Odioni Gallo, JJ Okocha and the great Rashidi Yakini. Um, shortly after that, Osime almost played Lukman in again, but he was slightly offside. And then we saw great tracking back from Moses Simon just before halftime to prevent a counter-attacking opportunity for the Antelopes. Um, second half, we saw Zedu Sanushi shoot wide from an Iwobi cutback. I don't know if any of you saw the clip of the anti in the stands telling Zedu Sanushi to calm down. Like, ah, Rora, take your time, man. Um, and then 49th minute, Lukman did some good work, cut the ball back for to Osime, um, but Osime was in front of the ball and then Iwobi shot wide. We then had a great chance from Bassi, who headed wide um, as Osime tried to play a bicycle kick in the 56th minute. Our biggest worry in the game was the 58th minute. Angola hit the post. 
a bit of sloppy defending from Nigeria, um, but we saw their number nine play through on goal, um, and he hit the post. Um, I'm not sure if Nabali touched it, but that was the one and only time where we were really, really, really under the cosh. And then after that, it was a bit of a back and forth game with no real opportunities to the 81st minute where Moses Simon had another magic run, where he had his shot blocked. He should have passed in that moment, to be fair. Um, no, sorry, that was in the 61st minute, forgive me. Uh, we saw Sanusi have a decent free kick in the 63rd minute, but not too much power behind it. Osime was almost clear from a long ball, but a defender kicked him in his face and got a yellow card. If not, Osime would have been thrown on goal. And in the 74th minute, we thought Osime finally had his second goal of AFCON um, from a header following a corner, uh, a free kick from Lukman. Um, but it was rightly ruled out for offside after VAR's intervention. And then we saw yet another great block from the Angolans in the 80th minute. Osime had a great chance. He turned toward the defenders and shot the ball, but it was a great block by the Angolan defender, to be fair. Um, but yeah, in general, really, really good performance from Super Eagles. Um, as dominant as a 1-0 win could be, to be fair, um, the Angolans didn't really threaten apart from that one opportunity they had. Great performances. I need to shout out Moses Simon. He was unbelievable in this game. I can't even lie to you. Uh, shout out to Moses Simon. Look, man. Oh, my God. Finishing and decisiveness. Just spot on. And I saw a clip of his dad talking about how proud he was. And honestly, it was just a great moment to see. Ola Aina, yet again, another exceptional performance. I was watching the game thinking, this guy will not look out of place in Aston Villa or West Ham. So what's going on here? So Ola Aina, you have done yourself so much good in this tournament. Calvin Bassi as well. The entire defense, as you know, exceptional again. Osime, yes, he did not score, but he was a nuisance yet again. You could just tell he's a cut above everyone on the pitch. Not so good. Zedu Sanusi again. I mean, decision making, I don't know, man. But apart from Sanusi, I thought everyone did well. I thought we managed the occasion very well. You know, cohesion of the team was brilliant. Osime played really well. Yes, you could argue that we still struggle to put away games despite being dominant. We really need to learn how to kill off games with the second or a third goal. But nevertheless, another clean sheet for Stani Nwabali. Very, very, very confident. Strong defense. You know, we still haven't conceded a goal since that goal in the first 15 minutes of our opening game against Equatorial Guinea. And we have to praise Pesero for his tactics once again. And me, most importantly for me, I'm happy with how Nigeria dealt with the pressure and expectations of the quarterfinal. So that's it for the game against Angola. Other quarterfinal fixtures. Oh, man, we were in for a treat. So DR Congo beat Guinea 3-1 in the second quarterfinal on Friday night, 9 p.m. Nigeria time. Really, really good performance from DR Congo. Maswaku scored a free kick. Yohan Wisa scored a penalty. And the best part was they scored all their three goals after going one down to Guinea, courtesy of Mohamed Bayo. Penalty. I thought Guinea were absolutely shocking in this game, to be fair. And DR Congo really, really deserved their win. I thought DR Congo would win on penalties, but they did the business in 90 minutes. So shout out to DR Congo. Mali lost to the Ivory Coast, and this was one of those blockbuster games that you wish you were there for. I did predict Mali to beat Ivory Coast 2-1 after extra time, but instead it was the Ivorians who beat Mali 2-1 after extra time. This game had it all. Mali missed the penalty in the first half to go 1-0 up. Just before halftime, Cote d'Ivoire got a player sent off, uh, Kasudu, after two clear yellow bookable offenses and then it's nil nil in the 72nd minute this guy i've forgotten his name he scores the goal to put marley up top one nil great finish from outside the box honestly fantastic goal but his parents are ivorian so it's the first time i've seen a player almost celebrate like when a player scores against his old club in in club football and he put his hands up being like sorry sorry i didn't mean to do that but yet in the 80, 89th minute, Simon Adingra of Brighton. Really, really great slaloming run. Segovana hits the ball and it falls down to Adingra again. And Adingra pokes the ball into the back of the net. Ivory Coast all of a sudden catch life yet again. And then just before the game ends in extra time to go into penalties, Ivory Coast score again. Would you believe it? Like, honestly, it was like a movie script. It's one of those ones that happens here. you're like, come on, it's not possible. Why are you whining me? But really and truly, what a game. So Ivory Coast march on 2-1 into the semifinals where they'll play DR Congo. And then the final game on Saturday saw Cape Verde play South Africa. 
I made a bet that South Africa would win on penalties, and I was right. But I did not think it would go the way I expected. Cape Verde dominated this game. They should have scored four or five goals, but they didn't. And then lo and behold, South Africa's goalkeeper, Ronwen Williams, he stepped up to the plate. He said, I'm a real man today. First of all, he made a last minute save in the 90th minute of the game, tipping a shot from number nine from Cape Verde onto the post which basically was the last shot of the game and Cape Verde would have gone through. And then he saved four penalties in the penalty shootout to give South Africa the win by two goals to one on penalty shootouts. He also dived the right way for the one penalty Cape Verde scored. So even though his own teammate, South Africa, missed two pens, he was exceptional. It's one of the best penalty shootout performances I've ever seen from a goalkeeper. So shout out to Ronwen Williams and the Mamelodi Sao now boys. Sorry, Bafana Bafana. So... Moving on to the big one, Nigeria, we play Bafana Bafana on Wednesday, 6 p.m. Nigeria time in the Africa Cup of Nations semi-final. How do we start? History, very, very loop-sided in Nigeria's favor, to be fair. We have played South Africa 14 times. We have won seven of those games, which is 50% of those games. We have drawn five, and we have, lost, we have lost to South Africa just twice in our history. Those two times, one was an international friendly in 2004, so it doesn't really count. And the other one was in 2017 in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifier, where they shocked us in Nigeria and beat us 2-0. The good thing is we still qualified for that African Cup of Nations tournament, which was in 2019, where we exacted our revenge on them in the quarterfinals of that tournament. So... This will be our last clash, our first clash against South Africa since that 2019 AFCON quarterfinal in Egypt where we beat them 2-1. If you remember that game very well, Samuel Chukwese put us in the lead in the 27th minute and then Bongani Zungu, the defender, equalized in the 71st minute. And then Chust Ekong, who's been having a storm in AFCON, scored the winning goal in the 89th minute to send the Super Eagles into our semi-final where we unfortunately lost to Algeria after Riyad Mahrez scored that last minute free kick, which we all remember. Um, and the funny thing is, this is South Africa's first appearance in the semi-final of AFCON since 2000, where Nigeria co-hosted AFCON with Ghana. If you remember that tournament, that was the first tournament I remember watching as a kid. It's the first one I remember in my life. We beat them 2-0. Kutsi of Tijani, Babangira's brace. He scored one in the first minute and the 34th minute to end the tie. This was really the golden age in terms of team for both Nigeria and South Africa. I mean, we had the likes of Ike Shurumo, Taribo West, Babayaro, JJ Okocha, Kanu, Tijani Babangida, Sondeo Lise, Finidi George, Mutio Adikboju in our squad. Like, this was really like super eagles. And South Africa, to be fair to them, that was when they had Andrea Renze, the goalkeeper. They had Mark Fish and Lucas Redebe in center of in, the, in central defense. Quinton Fortune was still playing for them. You remember the Man United player? And they had Sean Bartlett, the great bagsman who used to play for Charlton. So all in all, what a game. So it will be the repeat of this semi-final. One thing we must remember, we have to be wary of South Africa as they have a very settled team. And they, how have they performed so far in AFCON? So in AFCON so far, South Africa lost their first game against Mali 2-0, even though they had an impressive first half. They looked a bit naive. Following that game, they beat Namibia 4-0 in Group E before finishing off with a 0-0 draw against Tunisia. You remember the round of 16 game against Morocco, which was probably the standout fixture from South Africa so far in the tournament. They beat Morocco, who were heavy favourites, 2-0. Uh, Mokwena scored a final free kick in the 90th minute to put in the dagger. And of course, I've just touched on what happened against Cape Verde in the penalty shootout. So... It must be said, the only dominant win they've had so far was against Namibia. They were impressive against Morocco. Um, one thing to mention is they've also not conceded a goal since that first game against Mali. So Ronwin Williams, apart from being a penalty shootout specialist, has also been very good in keeping South Africa in games and their defense has been exceptional. I've mentioned the chemistry they have with eight of their starting 11 playing for Mamelodi Sundowns, including Percy Tao, who now plays for Al Ali, but he came from Mamelodi Sundowns via Brighton in the Premier League. So we must be careful. And with Ronan Williams making four saves in the penalty shootout, we must put the game to bed before we get to penalty shootouts. One thing must also be said, Noah Bali is also a bit of a short penalty sh um, shootout um, specialist himself. But obviously, we haven't seen the evidence for Nigeria yet. And yesterday was the Grammys. We all know what happened. Tyler won the Grammy over Nigeria. So it's time for us to do what we need to do on Wednesday. Anticipated excite. Pesero is not going to change the lineup. We're going to start the exact same 11. Noabali, Ajay, Ekong, Basi, Ola Aino, and Zedu as wingbacks. It will be an Oyeka in the middle. 
Simon, look, man, or Simeon will all start. If there's any change that would happen, it may be Zedu Sanasi coming out. But it looks like Pacero will keep the faith in him. So that's who I expect to start. South Africa will start the exact same starting 11 as well. I don't really think they'll make any changes. Um, I will put up the clip of their players in the video um, for everybody to see. Um, but make sure we need to worry about Ronald Williamson goal. We need to score. Mokwena in midfield number four. He's the one who scored that great free kick against Morocco. He's very, very solid in the middle of the park. Percy Tau is probably their best player, number 10. He's had a bit, he hasn't really scored that many goals in Africa. I think he's got one so far, but we need to be wary about him. And we also need to be wary of Magopa, their number nine. He's not the most clinical striker, but he scored a decisive first goal against Morocco, so we need to be careful. What is my score prediction? I think the Super Eagles will beat South Africa 2 0. I think it's Victor Simez time to finally score his second goal of AFCON. Despite how impressive he's been in all the games, he will get his goals in this game. And I expect him to see my brace 2-0. Key storylines, we must manage the pressure and mountain expectations of this game. Nigeria, we have now made our 16th semi-final, including this tournament, out of 20 AFCON appearances. By far the most of any nation in Africa. However, we've only played in seven finals. So if you remove this 16th semi-final, that means out of 15 semi-finals, we've won... We've played seven finals. We've won semi-final in seven of them and lost in the semi-final eight times. This is only going to potentially, we've only been to two finals since the millennium, the 2001 and in 2013 when we went on to lift the trophy. So we've won three finals and lost four finals, including three to Cameroon and one to Algeria. So it's time for us to rise. If there's one thing Nigeria like to do is lose a semi-final and win the bronze medal match. No more, especially not to South Africa where we're clearly the superior team based on the quality of our players. So Nigeria, please and please, we don't want third place no more, especially not losing to South Africa. So please and please and please, we need to win this game. One thing to be wary about, both defenses are very solid. So I think it's the player quality and discipline that will see us through in this game. Um, Osime, it is time. And be wary of Ronald Williams in penalties. So we need to wrap this game in 90 minutes or an extra time. And we cannot afford to be complacent in front of goal. We must take our chances. So good luck to the Super Eagles. We need to beat Bafana Bafana and go to the final of AFCON, which we played this Sunday, February 11th. Other semi-final tie, we will see Avricos play DR Congo. Um, I will predict Ivory Coast to win on penalties or extra time because it seems like there's some waves that are just pushing Ivory Coast to this AFCON. I mean, they've literally resurrected from the back of from the brink of death in the group stage. Also against Senegal with a penalty in the, eight, in the final 10 minutes of the game and then winning on penalties. And then also, I've just gone through the Ivory Coast Mali match. They are literally, they refuse to die. So I expect Ivory Coast to beat Congo somehow. It probably will be on penalties or extra time. And we will see Nigeria play against Ivory Coast on Sunday. But let's see. We'll see how it goes. So that's it for this episode of the Nigeria Football Weekly Podcast. Um, I mean... It's time, guys. I cannot wait for this game on Wednesday. And hopefully, the next time I'll be doing this podcast on Thursday, we will be previewing the Africa Cup of Nations final with Nigeria, hopefully, in that game, playing against Ivory Coast or DR Congo. So that's it for this episode of the podcast. Thanks again for rocking with me. Please, if you enjoyed this video on YouTube, make sure you give us a like and also sub subscribe. That would be amazing. Remember to follow us on all our social media channels where we are, Nigeria Football Weekly everywhere except twitter which is nfwpod and also our youtube channel is nigeria football weekly that's it for me and go super eagles hopefully we will be in the final of afcon peace out and take care we don't go grief for anybody this year amen thanks for watching this video please like share subscribe and click the bell to get a notification whenever we drop a video you can also find our social media channels listed below and of course, up Super Eagles and Nigerano de Eva Carilas.